So we've all been in this situation, right? We get an enemy low and we want the kill, but they just keep turbo building and expanding into new boxes. We can't finish the kill. And before we know it, we end up getting third party right back to the lobby. So how on earth do the pros do it, man? Like how do they defeat these defensive players so quickly? Well, let me tell you this, man. You're in luck today, my friends, because we're gonna be looking at the secrets to getting past your opponent's box. Starting with some box fight theory and peace control tips, and then finishing with the best phasing tricks available in season for these tips guys yo they're gonna help you pick up way more eliminations than ever and not only that they're gonna have you rethinking your approach to box fighting all together so make sure you guys stick around to the very end guys you do not want to miss this one but in the meantime if you want to rank up and become a more effective box fighter our coaches are here to help they know all the ins and outs and can show you precisely what you need to do to improve. So to get better and see better results, check out our coaching today with the link that's in the description. What's going on, guys? This is not your ordinary guy. This is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Bunch your crunch army. Where you at? It's time to sit back, relax, and grab some of my favorite candy. What is that, y'all? It's that bunch of crunch. Yo, and let's get this going. So, box fighting in Fortnite is kind of like a game of chess. It's all about strategy. And to defeat defensive opponents or really any type of opponent, you got to do two things, all right? Listen to this. Read and mislead them. Reading involves spotting tell signs that allow you to determine what your opponent will do next. And misleading is confusing your opponent to prevent them from reading you. So we're going to get into reading enemies in a sec, but when it comes to misleading, it's good to practice to always switch up your angle of attack. You want to strike different pieces, okay? Get multiple walls, low HP, attack from from corners, move around a lot, and most importantly, avoid trying the same thing twice in a row. All of these are fantastic ways to keep your enemy on their toes, which will allow you to take more walls while also finding more opportunities for damage. Really though, bro, like what I'm saying is that you need to be patient, man. Like we're always saying that in our videos, and it's really true, like you can't rush into box fights and try just to like speed run every kill, because if you do that, you're gonna get punished super hard. For instance, like a mistake many players make is committing to the pickaxe swing when we don't even know if our opponent is low. If you haven't done damage, you should assume they're full. So if you go to pickaxe a wall and they're full HP, they'll probably make an edit play and uh, yeah, that's it for you. So in that case, like what did you do wrong? Well, you didn't give yourself enough time to reach your opponent. And also you didn't mislead them at all. You were predictable and you were easy to counter. What you should have done is wait for the edit with your shotgun out, or you should have swung your pickaxe once to bait the edit, then pulled out a weapon to shoot one once the edit gets made. But on the other hand, not every opponent will go for an edit play. Some players are really passive, preferring to just continuously expand and hide in new boxes. Your best bet to counter this type of player is to apply constant pressure with weapons while searching for peace control and damage opportunities, okay? Peace control is beyond crucial to punish turtlers. And in these situations, it's vital to reach your enemy's movement and respond with builds, especially cones and walls. So by doing that, like not only will you block and prevent them from escaping, but you're also going to have access to them through edits as well. For example, all right, let's take a look at Mongrel here, and I mean like right here. As he bounces up, he applies pressure, pretty standard stuff, but then he sees his opponent place a ramp. That ramp is the sign which lets Mongrel know they're going to edit out the top. So Mongrel responds with a shot and some peace control to box his opponent in, finishing the kill rather quickly. Now that didn't seem too complicated, and to be fair, most peace control really isn't. It's more the execution that's really challenging, which is why peace control actually requires a decent amount of practice, right? In both creative and actual matches to really get good at it. All right, so one of the techniques that you need to practice the most is wall takes into cone control. Most of us forget cone control after taking a wall, which can sometimes lead to a fight lasting way longer than it really needs to be. And doing it after wall take barely slows you down at all. So it's really a must to know. As for other techniques that you need to practice, okay, there are only a few essentials which you absolutely need to know by now. One being double edits. A standard move nowadays is to place a cone and floor above where you think your opponent is going to move. Then editing through, placing a cone on wall, and going for the shot. You can actually use stairs instead of cones as well, so both are worth practicing. But 
all in all, man, like this one's not too hard to master. Spend a bit of time in creative, just going over the motions and you're gonna get it in no time. One final technique that you should practice is full boxing after a wall edit. Boxing up enemies is one of the most effective and quick ways to finish players that don't adequately cover themselves. You take control of everything around them as fast as possible. They get confused and you're able to finish the kill right then and there. So it's really not that hard. Just remember to place a cone inside the box for full effectiveness. Now, of course, these techniques are only a fraction of what you should be practicing in the grand scheme of things. But when it comes to countering defensive players, whew, they're fundamentals, man. So practice, then practice again <laughs> and keep going until it feels like second nature. But if peace control isn't really your thing, you might find the next section of the video more even suitable. So don't go anywhere, my friends. Just a reminder, on Pro Guys, you can upload your gameplay and have it reviewed by a professional coach in 24 hours. This is absolutely crazy. Perfect if you're on high ping, low ping, or whatever. Doesn't matter. We're going to find a coach that fits you, and you're going to get the best tips available anywhere. So don't forget to check it out. Now that we've got an idea of how to use peace control in game sense to defeat turtlers, what about those who are just too good or, you know, like on too low of a ping? Well, first of all, it's sometimes a smart move to just disengage when a fight isn't going in your favor. I know that's not really like what the video is about, but I mean, look, what would you rather have? All right, spend a thousand mats chasing a guy only to die two minutes later because you're in shambles or spend 300, realize what's going on and be like, yo, I'm out. And then you survive until the end game. I know what I do, but okay, like, if you really, really want the kill, well, that's where phasing can really come in handy, all right? In case you're just new or you haven't really kept up in the past year, phasing involves clever usage of game mechanics to slip through builds, even when your opponent is holding down terminal build. Many techniques can achieve this, some very practical and some not so much. So what we've done for you guys is bring it down to the top seven techniques that we think you need to know for season four. None of these are really new, but overall, they're really the most useful. First off, all right, when it comes to getting through builds, there's no item in season for as powerful as crash pads. The simplest way to force yourself into an enemy's box is to approach a wall, throw a crash pad at the top, switch to a weapon, and just wait for it to launch you in. But that technique is pretty counterable since your opponent will literally watch you do it. So we recommend using a top-down variation by attaching a cone to the box you're standing on and then throwing a crash pad on it in such a way where it drops you in. You've got to ensure the crash pad is far enough away that it doesn't hit you or else you're going to go flying. But all in all, man, like this one's pretty simple and really great for quick finishes. But it can be kind of reckless if your opponent isn't low on health. So here is a safer method. When you go to crash pad the cone, don't stand on your opponent's box. Instead, stand on the floor to the left. Then you can throw the crash pad, which should destroy the floor and cone above your opponent's box, allowing you to replace them and edit through for the kill. Now, for the last crash pad trick that you need to know, all you do is just run up to the corner of a box, place at least two walls you can just wedge yourself in. Then with your crosshair toward the right wall, you toss the crash pad and it sends you in. Depending on the piece inside your opponent's box, it won't always get you inside, but it should break enough walls and be confusing enough that you're gonna get a free hit regardless. Okay, so now that we've got crash pads out of the way, let's take a look at three phasing techniques that utilize building pieces, starting off with the classic ramp phase. You probably know this one already, but you know, to perform it, get the enemy's walls health in one shot range, either for your pickaxe or a weapon. Next, place a ramp over your head, and at this point, you're gonna jump and break the wall as soon as your head hits the top of the ramp. This gets you past turbo building and right into your opponent's box. Try to get your opponent low first, so you don't take a huge risk going in. Okay, next is the the top down phase method. To do this one, you first need to take control of the cone over your opponent's box. Once you do that, edit it into a ramp, then crouch and squeeze into it as much as you can. Start shooting your opponent's floor and you should slip right into their box. Lastly, okay, we've got the bottom up phase for this one. You place a ramp underneath your opponent's floor, run up it, crouch, and just go all the way up and shoot through the floor. Just like with the top down method, you face right through. But what's really remarkable about this technique is that since you're approaching from below, most players are not going to expect it, and it can lead to some easy kills. All right, guys, so successfully getting through your opponent's box really comes down to three significant aspects. You guys ready? First, the mind game element, where you're reading and misleading your opponent. Second, peace control, all right, where you always want to look for block out points and opportunities to slide in cones. And third, phasing techniques, using either items or builds. Now, there are no shortcuts to getting good at this, all right? What you're going to have to do is train. So we recommend hopping into creative and practicing all the moves we showed you one by one. It's better if you bring a friend and make 
maybe practice fighting against each other. But even if you're alone, you can get a substantial amount of practice by just repeating the steps until you got it down. After you feel good and creative, you should hop into arena with these concepts in the back of your mind. Set goals for yourself, right? Like get five kills using crash pad phases or get three kills using peace control. You know, stuff like that. I do that. It really, really does help your growth. Simply setting goals is one of the best ways to transfer your skills from creative, right, into the game. And really, all it requires is your time and really just a bit of willingness to just stick through the learning phase. All right, guys, once again, this is your motivation guy. That's right, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. Man, I'm so proud of you guys. I'm so encouraged by your progress. Keep going. Don't quit. Don't surrender. All right. And I hope you really enjoyed the video. You know, it's really been a pleasure. Listen, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Once we hit 1 million, we're releasing my story of your motivation guy on how I made it to where I am today. And uh, yo, keep eating that bunch of crunch and let's get this going.